We look at what, um, what happens towards the end where she's saying, um, I say towards the end, it's towards the end of the story, it doesn't necessarily mean it actually came in that order when she spoke to me, uh, it's important for you to know that, um, where she says, I've been fobbed off. When I asked why, they said, just because it is. But why? Don't ask questions like why. It just is. Pythagoras' theorem just says it is. Well, why? Just because it does. That's what it adds up to. Why? Because it does. Why? A lot of maths is because it is. Well, why is pi 3.3, whatever it is? Because it is. But why isn't it 56? Because it isn't. Why? What I mean is it comes back to why. I have trouble with the fact that, they, that, the fact that they can be right and wrong when a man made numbers. And she goes on to say a little bit more about the male role in all this. Um, a person decided that pi is this, that and the other. How can we really know, really? Because he made it up, didn't he? Made all the laws as well. And I know that they all fit together, and I find it hard to get my head around how somebody can discover a new mathematical law, which we have students who come to us and on math, are doing philosophy of maths courses who struggle to grasp some of those ideas, but she's there engaged in that thinking through at quite a deep level about, well, what's the nature of this stuff that I'm supposed to be dealing with anyway, um, as she tries to make sense of this experience. So that sense of that struggle in that sense, like a, um, an, quite an existential if it doesn't sound too pompous, an ontological struggle with what the hell this is about anyway, what does this all mean? Um, secondly, that sense all the way through of, um, that, we're, that we're so familiar with of measuring and being measured, measuring and being measured. But I think what's important is what, is what comes out very clearly is the, is the sense in which that measuring takes place in relation to each other so that children become, um, the other children in the, in the, in the class become um, the measuring instrument, and you're measuring yourself against them. Um, uh, you know, quite the reverse and opposite of the of the of the relational um, equity that Joe talked about. The almost diametrically opposite. Here we we have it. And so she says, I didn't like it at all. You couldn't get out of it, and I used to dread it. <laughs> I didn't worry about it all week, but by the time it got to Friday morning, and I knew it was coming Friday afternoon, yeah, I'd be I'd be dreading it, and I'd be looking, who have I got to beat? Who have I got to beat? Or, they're going to beat me. Don't worry about it. They're going to beat me. Or, I've got a chance with this person. You're weighing up people's weaknesses. It's cruel, really. I'd be thinking, hmm, he's a bit thick. I'll beat him. Or, <coughs> he's really clever, so I, I, won't, I won't be able to beat him. And it's terrible to be making these sort of value judgments about other people at nine but you do know it. That was the culture of school then. You told the kids at the top they were at the top, and you told the kids they were at the bottom, they were at the bottom. I knew who it was okay to be beaten at by to be beaten by at maths. It was okay to be beaten by John Smith, who went on to Cambridge. That was okay, that was alright. I shouldn't be saying these names. But I can still remember them all. I can see them up there in green pen on these damn league tables. To be beaten at maths. To be beaten at times tables by Simon Jones, or I could beat hands down in any of the subject. Well, it was embarrassing. To just not get the answer first, or just stand, stand there, uh, 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 stuttering. When the question got asked, and the other person's got in there, and you sit down. When you're like little, when you're little like that, you don't want to stand up in front of all your mates, do you? You don't want to stand up there in a classroom with kids, because you're not as confident. Um, and thirdly, that whole sense of being done to, um, both being done to, and I'm just using that phrase, I mean, there's many others you could substitute in there, um, being done to both by people, and quite clearly the teachers, mother, and so on, and also potentially other, other children in the class, um, but also being done to by the mathematics. So we have this uh, description of... Uh, Speedy Brown, who, as it's not written down and it's some time ago, he was a vicar apparently. I don't know why that's, uh, if that's something that was a detail that I sort of wanted to put in but felt like I shouldn't, so I'm going to just <laughs> announce that. Um, but it isn't only the vicars of this world that act in this way, I think. So when I was about 14, I remember that I was taught maths by this man. We called him 
Speedy Brown. I don't think he had any concept of how to teach maths to children at all. He was very, very quick. Apparently, he was this brilliant mathematician. He was a, he was a very, very scary man. If you met him outside the classroom, he was lovely. But inside the classroom, he had the boys in tears as well. And so maybe we might think about how the maths classroom doesn't just um, assemble the, the, the children, but it also, to use Valerie's phrase, but also assembles the teacher as well, the teachers as well, in very particular ways. Um, but inside the classroom, he had the boys in tears as well. He would write on the board, to calculate, and then he'd underline it. And we would write what we had to calculate, and it would be calculation. And I only ever got it right by chance. Sometimes we'd have to copy, and it'd just be a complete scribble. And I wouldn't have a clue. I wouldn't have a clue what he's writing. And it would be, now class, is that clear as crystal or as clear as mud? And we'd all have to say crystal. And it wasn't, it wasn't at all. And I'd just be lost. And numbers, that's perfect. <laughs> numbers, so just picking out that, that, that relationship with, with the numbers. Um, the numbers just float away, they just float away. Even when I use a calculator, I'll check the three times table. And this is where I can't, you know, I ask you to read it aloud and maybe to try and get your sense. That's where I get stuck. I don't know what it's like for numbers to float away. I do know what it's like for the meaning, the, the French equivalent of anything to float away, because that's where my, my thing goes. But with numbers, it doesn't happen for me. But even when I use a calculator, I'll check three times. I just don't trust them. Numbers, I don't trust them. They've got a mind of their own, and they're just all over the place, and I can't make any sense of them. And at school, I'd have all these numbers, and I'd think I was doing a certain thing with them. And you'd get an answer at the end, and it'd be wrong, and I'd be like, well, God, I've just spent half an hour with you lot. How could it be wrong? They just didn't work for me. Um, and so you, there's, an, there's a different sense there, which actually we are familiar with, I think, in terms of our own worlds, our own life worlds, where, where inanimate objects, concepts, actually have a, have a, we have a relationship with them, which is more like having a relationship with another person, but sometimes that doesn't come out um, in, when, we, when we talk about that. And then we have the masters like a fog. Two, yeah. Okay. I think it's probably um, two minutes left. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's, that's, all, that's, all, that's, all, I, that's yeah. all I need. Um, so, yeah, one of the things that we're interested in um, inviting you to consider is that, well, there are two things. I mean, one is um, the whole issue of the kind of methodological. Um, approach um, that's exemplified by um, this research artifact of Marx, but um, is present elsewhere as well, to do with the role of narratives or narrating or storying or um, what are we doing when we construct research artifacts of that kind and do they lead into the production of public resource in a, in a useful way. Um, I mean, uh, just as an aside, we would be um, very interested in people who are much more deeply into psychoanalytical theory uh, offering different perspectives um, on the research artifact. So that's just sort of a, a, an aside. Um, and then the other thing, of course, bringing it back to the title of the seminar, is just what, you know, what does, what does the story tell us, if, you, if, if anything? about the affordances and constraints, the, the room for manoeuvre, the, the freedom, choice, uh, choices and so on, that are available to Louise as she kind of puts her, one of her selves together in relationship to mathematics and in telling the story that she, she told to Mark. Um, 